Every day, every day, Chicago reaches a new high of black criminality, black dysfunction, black on white crime, black on gay, black on straight, black on Asian, wildly out of proportion, and right next to it, also reaching all-time highs are the denial and delusion from reporters, public officials, activists, everybody all over the city to say, no, this black criminality is not a problem. No, everything is a problem but the black criminality. I mean, last year we had a huge study. It was like the identical study in Baltimore and Chicago. So what's wrong with Baltimore? What's wrong with Chicago? Why is there so much danger of violence? You know, why are people fleeing? Why are the houses in such crappy shape? Well, that was easy. The, the cops are picking on black people for no reason whatsoever. And so this is like every day. There's some outfit manufacturing some excuse for black dysfunction and it doesn't show any sign of stopping. I tell you who's right on the front lines of it, who really get irri gets irritated at this, are cops in Chicago. So many cops in Chicago watch these videos. They leave comments. You may or may not know they're a cop. But I've got, I got two stories from one day from a couple of Chicago cops. We're gonna, I'm going to run them together because one's a radio story and one's kind of a video without audio. So they're two separate stories. One's about, uh, you'll see here, about segregation, how white people are picking on black people in Chicago for no reason whatsoever, doing all these bad things to them. Then the second story is kind of a new twist in the Chicago thing, how cops in Chicago are picking on black people who ride bikes in Chicago for no reason whatsoever. Cops are really irritated at this. So let's blow through those stories. I'll see you on the other side. Chicago is reeling from another weekend of gun violence. Three dead, 29 wounded in shootings. And a new study out today says one of the factors behind Chicago's violence epidemic is segregation. The Chicago area is one of the most segregated in the country, both racially and economically. Marisa Navarra is vice president at Metropolitan Planning Council, which partnered with the Urban Institute on the study. She joins us from Chicago. And Marisa, what were some of the most striking things that you found in this study about the impacts of segregation? One of the things we really set out trying to understand better and that I think did come back very strikingly was what is the impact to everyone in this region? I think typically when we've talked about segregation, we talk only about the negative impacts to low-income people of color. And that's really left a big part of our region feeling that segregation is not their problem and that they don't need to be part of the solution. This report really changes that narrative and, and shows that there are direct impacts that hit everyone. And uh, we see that in things like educational attainment, where we see that 83,000 bachelor's degrees, those would be for African-Americans and whites. And in fact, the bigger impact would be for whites. In that instance, we also see that the drop in homicides, that impacts everyone. And, and our report really amplifies all the ripple effects of that, as well as increased income for African-Americans. There's lots of ripple effects, including you know, $8 billion to our GDP. So I think what's interesting for us in this report is that we're really, for the first time, able to quantify the impacts to everyone in our region. And why is segregation such a problem for all of those issues, for the economy, for violence, for education? What is it about people being segregated that causes these problems? So this is a study that really looks at what? You know, this is a study of correlation, which doesn't tell us as clearly as we'd like why we see relationships, it tells us that those relationships exist. Now, clearly there's things that we know that segregation has caused problems over history. And we know that many of those patterns, even though laws have changed, we know that many of those patterns persist into the present day. So it's one of the things we're moving to in our next phase of this project, which is really the what do we do about it? And we should say, by the way, that the other regions on the list that are actually more segregated than Chicago are Philadelphia, Bridgeport, Connecticut, New York, and Milwaukee. Have there been any regions that you've seen that have been successful at desegregating? Yes, we looked at several regions that fall right near the median and that have similar population demographics as Chicago. So it was important to us that the regions had similar proportions of white, African-American, Latino 
The three I would pull out would be Houston, Atlanta, and Raleigh-Durham. Atlanta in particular, over the same period of time from 1990 to 2010, where Chicago moved from 8th to 10th most segregated, Atlanta went from 21st to 41st. So in our next phase of work, one of the things we'll be very interested in doing is trying to understand what happened in Atlanta. What are the things that can be done to really make the kinds of changes that they were able to make during that time frame? To me, what's hopeful about this story, when we look back over our history, um, we created the segregation that we have. It didn't happen organically. It was deliberate. What that means is we can be just as deliberate to undo it. Well, as you know, it's against the law to predict the future in the state of New York, which is why I don't like to get into, uh, well, it's going to be a long, hot summer, so we're going to run into a lot of trouble, that kind of stuff that a lot of other people seem to like to do. But I'm going to break that rule right now, because here's what Chicago cops are saying about a major development in their city. They're talking about the Obama library, where it's going to go. That library is going to go in the ghetto, okay? And the kind of fools that are going to be walking around that neighborhood with briefcases are the kind of fools who think they're down just because they're down with the cause. The cause is going to be down with them. There's going to be a lot of... There's going to be a lot of white academic targets walking in and around that library, a very, very dangerous neighborhood, the south side of Chicago. It's going to be a this is going to be a target gallery down there. That's what the cops are telling me. And that's what reporters and lots of other people in Chicago would tell you. They weren't so damn afraid of making the black kids angry. <laughs> 